In this video, I'm going to show you how to install this TRQ passenger side CV axle on this Toyota Camry. Let's get started. If your vehicle has a locking lug nut like this one here, take your locking lug nut key, center it up, and before you raise the vehicle off the ground with the tire on the ground, you're supposed to use a breaker bar on these. You're not really supposed to put a power tool on them because it can damage them. So I'm gonna use a breaker bar with a 21 millimeter socket and just break this lug nut free. And at this point, you can put a power tool on it. It's just not good to have the forces of the impact on, that, uh, on those splines there. So I'm gonna leave that on here. Now let's raise it up and take off the other lug nuts, also with a 21 millimeter socket. Take the wheel off. The axle nut should be squished in a little bit, peened over right here just to, to uh, lock it. So take a punch that fits in there or any other tool that you might have and give it a few taps to hopefully raise this ridge up just a little bit. Now take a 30 millimeter 12 point socket and remove your axle nut. Make sure the axle pushes through. Mine does, no problem, so we're good to move along. If it doesn't, either take a chisel with a center bit on it and hit it with a hammer or put the axle nut flush on here. Hit that with a hammer, use a rubber mallet, whatever you have to do, but you wanna break it free from the hub so that you can actually get it out of here when the time comes. Now let's remove the three 17 millimeter fasteners that hold this ball joint onto the control arm so we can separate it, push the knuckle out and get the axle out. If you don't wanna do it this way, you can also take out the strut bolts, but I find those to be a little bit more work than just taking these out and pushing the knuckle out from the bottom. There we go. There we go. Now underneath you can see the axle and it is held up by this pedestal on the carrier bearing. We have to remove and we have to separate those two. This is a lot of times a very tedious process. It is not very easy just because of rust buildup. Now this is uh, looking like it's not gonna be too rusty here for me but uh, hopefully this is also the case for you. A lot of times, if it is completely rotted and seized in place, you will have to replace the pedestal with this. You just take them out as an assembly and then you put both new pieces in. Let's start with removing this 14 millimeter set screw here or this bolt that basically is here just to lock in the carrier bearing and prevent it from spinning inside the housing. Take this out and set it aside. Then you have a snap ring, which is more like a clip than a, a snap ring, but you need pliers to squeeze it and get it out of its groove. A lot of times these also rust in place. Okay, that came out. And now, well, it depends on your condition. You might need an air chisel. You might need to chisel it out of here, or you might be able to get away with just a hammer and a pry bar or whatever you have that'll basically hit this to drive it out and you'll see the bearing will separate from this carrier housing and at the same time the axle comes out of the transmission. I'm going to start with just a pry bar right on this groove here. Clearly mine has been recently replaced. That's why I'm able to take it out that easily. Uh, I have had to put these in the press before and put a hydraulic press on the axle side while holding the carrier and press them out that way. So it, when they seize, they seize up really tight, just so you know. At this point, we can remove the entire axle assembly from the vehicle. Now you're gonna wanna grab this axle shaft and just slide it out carefully. All right, and there it is. Grab your new axle shaft slide it in here, be careful of your boots. And you're gonna wanna make sure that it goes through that carrier bearing uh, housing. You have to be really careful not to tear up your CV boots on this 
install because there's a lot of things that are going to be fighting you in the way here. Okay, as you bring this in, make sure it lines up in the transmission. Also, lines up on the carrier bearing side, just like so. All right. Now, for me, the inside of my carrier bearing pedestal here was clean. There was not much rust built up. Like I said, this has been recently replaced. So there was not much for me to do here, but if yours is rusty, consider cleaning it up. I just used the weight of the axle there to kind of push it in. And there we go, that's seated. Take the snap ring from your old axle and put it on this new one. Just like that. Now we'll get pliers and lock it in. If it's in poor condition, replace it. Be very careful with this. If it snaps, it'll hurt your fingers pretty bad. There we go. Make sure it's seated in its groove all the way around. And that spins completely and it's seated. I can see that. So let's get the 14 millimeter bolt in. That locks in this carrier bearing. Thread it on. If it's damaged, replace it. And you don't need to crank this down a lot. All you have to do is just snug it. So put your wrench or ratchet on it. Give it about an eighth of a turn after it bottoms out. Just make it nice and snug. Before I put the axle in, I'm gonna coat the splines with some anti-seize, just a thin layer. This is going to prevent it from seizing inside the hub in the future. And just coat that as well. All right, there we go. Pull the knuckle out, get that axle through. Make sure it lines up with the splines. And there we go. Let's get the ball joint reconnected before we go any further. Pull down on the control arm, get that ball joint up. Get the mounting nuts re-secured. And the bolt, well, this one might not line up yet. Yeah, it doesn't, so tighten up these mounting nuts first. and then get the bolt in. So here's the deal for torquing these fasteners. There are actually two different torque specs. If your flange on the mounting nut is 20 millimeters wide, so you're gonna have to measure it, the torque for these mounting nuts will be 55 foot pounds. However, if they are 22 millimeter in size, meaning larger, they cover a bigger surface area, the torque is actually 68 foot pounds. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you torque them right. I'm gonna go for the higher torque, so let's torque these down. All right, those are torqued. Let's get the axle nut back on. The torque for this is 217 foot-pounds, so I'm gonna drive it in with my air gun and then I will torque it down. It's important that you torque it down so that the bearing can be seated properly. Like I said, the torque for this is 217 foot-pounds, and to torque it, I'm going to put a pry bar between the lug studs. If you do this, make sure it's going in the right direction, you know, as you tighten so it stops spinning. And then grab your torque wrench and tighten this up. That's it right there. Now to lock this axle nut in, we have to Peen it down right here where the split is on the axle. So just take a chisel or whatever you have that'll make an indent and a hammer and tap it down. You don't have to go really far down. You just have to make sure that it doesn't back off by itself. Kind of like that. That should be perfect. It's got the wheel on. Start on all five of your lug nuts by hand so they don't cross thread and then in a cross pattern, torque them to 76 foot pounds. Once again, 76 foot pounds. Take this out and take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.